this is St Hilda's. I say this was built after the church. The church was here first and then St Hilda's. St Hilda was obviously a, um, a saint um, at the time of King Oswy, who was the king of Northumberland. Uh, she founded this obviously, and that's why it's named after her. Um, and they held the first the synod of Whitby here, which actually um, was partly to do with, with our calendar. But here at the Synod of Whitby, they actually came up with the actual date that Easter falls on every year. And I can never, in my wildest dreams, get my head round what is probably the most religious day of the year. How it can change the day. I mean, it's just, I just that to me is it was that happened. <laughs> so I, I, I really don't know, but yeah, but St Hilda is reputed to haunt the building of course and is seen standing sometimes in that huge window there in all the glory um, and suddenly just vanishes. <laughs> Have you seen her? <laughs> I already went coming out of the pub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that's all right. um, and she's, as far as I know, as far as I know, she is actually the only ghost that haunts it. But the next problem we've got here, in my humble opinion, is that because this is St Hilda's monastery, right, okay, we always label the ghost with the most famous person that we've heard of. Because I would ask all of you here now, and probably all the people in Whitby, does anybody know anybody else that is associated with this monastery? A name of anybody else? No, it's St Hilda's, yeah? So it's St Hilda's ghost, isn't it? Is it? Why, 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 why would it be St Hilda? I, I don't know. But that's the problem we've got. And this happens where, you know, Mary Queen of Scots, you know, every, I mean, she haunts every, every palace <laughs> that she was imprisoned in, from Linlithgow Palace to, Car, to Carlisle Castle to Bolton Castle to Wingfield Manor to Chatsworth to, to Tutbury Castle to... She haunts all of them, <laughs> apart from the place where she was executed, <laughs> which is Fotheringay Castle. And there's not a, not a trace, not a sign of the ghost of Mary Queen of Scots there. But it's always Mary Queen of Scots ghost. And I, I'll ask you now, what about the Tower of London? Who is it? What's the most famous, what's the ghost that haunts the Tower? I know there's lots, but what, come on. No? No, 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 as far as I know, well, probably, but come on, the most famous ghost that haunts the Tower of London. No, she wasn't there. Yes. Well, no, yeah, but you, you're right, but who, who would we all think haunts the Tower of London? Somebody said it. Anne Boleyn, Anne Boleyn. How do you know it's Anne Boleyn? Would you recognise her with a head under her arm? <laughs> or, or, or on her head for that matter? How do you know it's Anne Boleyn? Does, would anybody here recognise Anne Boleyn if she wanted past her now? Because I certainly wouldn't. So how do you know it's Anne Boleyn? Is oh. the first time we're on the door or something? No, that's, that's the other one that was beheaded at, at Hampton Court well, Palace. Not, the not other one that was beheaded. Um, Catherine, was Catherine, How no, Catherine Howard, wasn't it? I believe no, so, uh, yeah. Um, but no, basically, I say to you all, how do you know Tamblyn? Oh, she's always, she's seen wearing a Tudor dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, most people, well, the way some of the blokes wore yeah. you know, Tudor dresses in Tudor times, didn't they? So how do you know it's Anne Boleyn? Because it isn't Anne Boleyn, and this gentleman here knows exactly who it was. Margaret Pohl. Named Margaret Pohl. <laughs> Count, who Count, was Countess of Salisbury. Countess of Salisbury, who was the, uh, the mother of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Catholic Archbishop of Canterbury, who was appointed. Uh, but before then, when Henry VIII nicked the church, and we all became good Protestants, yeah? Um, Cardinal Pole, as he was then, that's, that's the son, Cardinal Pole, was very much against Henry VIII, and he fled to France. And so Henry VIII grabbed his mum instead. Named Margaret Pond. She was in the 70s, wasn't she? It was well, the late 70s at the time. And imprisoned at the Tower of London because he couldn't get hold of his son, her son. 
and eventually brought her out onto Tower Green to be beheaded. Say that again. <laughs> He was horrible, man. <laughs> yeah, big fat yes, he was. Anyway, <laughs> so basically, she came out onto the dock and she knelt down and placed her neck on the block and changed her mind and, and ran off. And the executioner chased her round and round <laughs> Tower Green, hacking away at her with the axe until he eventually, eventually had to piece the hilda. Now that, in my opinion, is the sort of trauma that can cause a woman. Whereas Anne Boleyn, oh, she had a lovely execution. I mean, she really did. I mean, she really because botched executions all the time, here we go. Botched, they're all executed. You know, to take someone's head off with one blow isn't easy. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it's not easy. It really is. You see, the, here we go. You see, the thing is that what you've got to remember is that you, this is the lowest of the low. So brought down. And appointed as hangman because you hang somebody and then give them the job. So you also had to behead people. But you didn't behead many people. You hanged a lot of people, but you didn't really behead many people. Kings and queens, lords and ladies, and they didn't come every day. Um, so, it, you know, you weren't practiced in the same way as you were with hanging people. And the second thing you've got to remember is that this guy is the lowest of the low. And he's got to cut the king's head off. Or the queen's head off, or lord so -so. Now, even today, in this age of equality, I think most of us would be slightly nervous if I was to say to you that um, the Queen's popping in in a minute. She's, going to come in. she's heard this ghost of what's going on tonight. And she's going to, would you be slightly nervous? Do you call her mom? Do you call her your majesty? Do we touch our forelock? You know, nerves. Can you imagine being nervous 300 years ago, 400 years ago? So what's the best way of curing nerves? A few drinks beforehand, before the execution. Yeah, so the chances of being able to put your head off straight away is, you know, the, the best I know is five blows to take off the Duke of Monmouth's head in 1685. So it, it, it's not a. Uh, so anyway, Henry VIII was slightly concerned about Anne Boleyn because I believe he still loved her, but of course he couldn't give her a, give a son. So that was the end of the So anyway, the, the execution with the axe is not good. Now we still own France, they were still own France, we still own Calais. And the French and the Germans used to take people's head off with a sword instead of an axe. And the headsman of Calais was pretty good. So Henry brought him over here to execute Anne Boleyn. Um, but he wanted to know if he could do a good job or not. And so you didn't you didn't kneel down and, and have your head chopped off like that. You had to kneel down with your head in the air. And they took a swing like that. Oh, can you imagine if you fainted or you started to shake or you moved your head? <laughs> Drop, show, oh my god. So Henry said, I need to know if I can do it properly. So he said, fetch me two felons from your prison, one tall, one short. And he stood them up and he took both heads off with one blow. And so Henry said, You'll do. You'll do. And he did. He took Anne Boleyn's head off in one blow, clean through. She had a good execution. <laughs> <laughs> so it wouldn't be her ghost that would have place at all. Henry VIII took it over and dissolved the monasteries. Um, it was given to a family called Tolmanley, and they built this place here as sort of their stately home. That's the museum, I believe, now, is it not for yeah, English Heritage Museum? But I will just work, work, I mean, just say, as far as I know, the only the only ghost that's in this place is this person that's seen in the window. Who it is, I don't know. But just do you, you realise how many? religious ghosts there are. Just think how many times people report seeing a ghostly nun. So many. Or a monk. Always monks and nuns, vicars, carts. No, no, carts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, 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 <laughs> probably are a few. Yeah. Down, down at the bottom of the in Whitby. I'm sure there's quite a few down there. Um, but, you know, there are so <laughs> many. So many. <laughs> So many really good ghosts. <laughs> she won't let me do any more ghosts. Yeah. She never heard it before. She, she never heard it before. Um, uh, but there's a big
it's the reason why you get so many reasons. The first reason is that, because in those early days, lots of people wore cloaks mm. and hoods. So everyone sees someone in a brown cloak or a grey, whatever, it's always a monk or a nun. Yeah. But there are numerous religious choices. And the reason is, quite simple, quite good actually talking about it here. Um, when this big fat king came along, Henry VIII, I said, right, boys and girls, we're all changing sides now. All of a sudden, we're not going to be good Catholics. We're all going to be Church of England. Protestants, I'm the boss now. I'm taking over. No more Pope. No more idolatry. No more this, that, the other. No more Catholicism. Uh, no more confession. No more communion. No more this. And all of a sudden, hey, what you've got to remember is that religion was everything. I mean everything. It, death was commonplace. Most people were dead by 40. Uh, the kids predeceased them. They've been in battles, they've seen executions. Death was not the problem, it was the afterlife. It was so important to people whether they went up or whether they went down. And that was paramount in people's lives. It was illegal not to go to church. And so it, it really meant everything to people. And all of a sudden, Henry VIII said, We're all changing sides. And I mean, I use this one, you know, but obviously it won't mean anything to most of you guys, but it's a bit like asking a Derby County supporter to put on a Nottingham Forest shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, really, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would, wouldn't you? Would Georgie, you, you would die rather than put the Forest die, shirt on. Yeah. There you go. A good Derby County supporter, you see. But, guys, joking apart, they were prepared to die rather than change sides. And if they did die a martyr to their faith, they were guaranteed entrance through the pearly gates to heaven. So dying, either being hanged, drawn and quartered, beheaded, burnt alive, tortured, didn't matter. <laughs> because you were guaranteed a, a place up there in heaven. But if you changed sides, as most of them did, they had to, didn't they? they, they nothing, no future for them. Guess what? They're damned. To eternal damnation and hellfire just for purely and simply becoming a Protestant instead of a Catholic. <laughs> and it's still going on now. Of course it is, big time. But it's a fact. And I will just ask this question. I love this one. Then she knows this one. You know, you know, you know, the, you know when, when, when these jihadis <laughs> make what they can make, and they're guaranteed 73 virgins. Is it 73? Anybody? Is it 72? 72. Oh, no. <laughs> Question. Are they the same virgins? <laughs> they never actually specify male or female. Either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one as well. Sorry. No. <laughs> but do you see what I'm Are they the same ones? Because, my God, they'll be well hammered, won't they? <laughs> 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 